Hey friends, what's up? It's me, JT, the Horn Hippie, and I'm coming at you today with my top 10 Sibelius tips for beginners. Before we get into anything, make sure you like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that little bell so you never miss a beat. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's get started. We're going to count down my top 10 tips for Sibelius users, starting with tip number 10. Tip number 10 get a numeric keypad if you don't already have one because the way that Sibelius works, it's all about inputting notes using that numeric keypad. And once you start using it, it's very clear, but you just need to make sure that you have one of those before you start working in Sibelius. We're just gonna create a quick project. Top 10 Sib2, full screen that BB. Tip number nine, this is a tip to help end your frustration. If this ribbon up here, the ribbon up here ever disappears, that means that you may have accidentally hit the shortcut command F1. Simply tap this green arrow over here and the ribbon will come back. It was so annoying before I knew all about that. You would have to go over here and click and the instant you clicked out, it would disappear. Sometimes I can see that being useful, but if you're a beginner, it's important to have the ribbon viewable at all times. Tip number eight, using the transport panel. So <laughs> this can be found over here in the view tab of the ribbon over here in the panels area this transport make sure that box is clicked and then you have this cute little navigator you can navigate all through your piece and you can play through by clicking play press stop to stop you can press spacebar to play spacebar to stop you can go back to the beginning of the document by pressing this button here you could go to the end of the document by pressing that button you can fast forward and rewind as needed or you can simply drag this little slider. This little line here basically represents the duration of your piece. And you can click anywhere in that to immediately have your playhead start in that spot. And so there's no music there, so it's not playing anything, but you get the picture. Tip number seven, how to add bars quickly. So you get to the end of the composition, the original documents are set up for whatever, you know, maybe 20 measures maximum. So a simple way to do that, just Command B. B, 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 and just hit that over and over again, or you can even hold it down, and it'll just add bars until you're done. Another way to do this is to go to the Home tab and click here, and you can add multiple ir irregular bars, and you can just select however many bars, let's say, you know, 50 bars, and then Enter. Then it'll just create your bars there at the end of your piece. Tip number six, how to quickly edit your bar lines. So say you want to add a final bar line, or you want to add a repeat sign, anything like that. So we're going to go over to the notations tab in the ribbon and simply select this bar line option here. And once you click this, it'll give you all these options here for all these different bar lines. I tend to use the start repeat, the end repeat, and the final, and the double, especially when there are rehearsal markers involved. Drop a quick tip for you there. A rehearsal marker, to add a rehearsal marker over the measure you've got selected, uh, is Command R. Let's make a double bar there, and then Command R. Hey, there we go. Our little rehearsal mark right there. Tip number five, how to quickly change a key. So select the bar you want the key change to occur in. It can be in any bar in the staff and you simply press the K button. And then all these key signatures will uh, appear. You can also do this by going into the notations tab and clicking the key signature button. So and let's do, let's go to B minor. Woo! And so then it'll create the key signature in that bar. Uh, if you have a bunch of bars selected for the new key signature, it'll create the key signature in all of those bars. But I like to just do it this way. You just create the key and then you select the uh, key that it returns to and just delete. And so you'll see when, um, I'll Command Z that to show you again. So when you highlight that key, it is selected in purple. So when it's selected there, that means it's uh, editable. So you can simply just hit the delete key and it's gone. And then it'll change the key to match what you have in the measure before. Also, if you want to delete a bar line real quick, just select the bar line, you'll see it's purple here, and delete. And then it'll go back to normal. When you start a key signature, it'll automatically put a double bar line at the front. Tip number four, how to change a time signature real quick. So simply select the bar, and much like we did with our key signature, in the notations tab in the ribbon, you can hit time signature, but I like using shortcuts, so we're gonna press T. And you can select from any of these options, you can even, even type in some up here, and if you want to allow a cautionary, you go, or you want to not allow a cautionary if you have like a page turn or something, go to more options in that uh, little drop down menu and deselect that. In my basics for musicians, I go over this in more detail. Check that video for an extended tutorial on how to do all these things. Yeah, let's just select three, four, boom, easy. 
And like the key signature, we can also delete the time signature that automatically appears here and just delete. And then it'll remain in three, four for the rest of the piece. Tip number three, hide stuff. This is a kind of funny tip, but you'll be surprised how useful it is, especially when you're using a lot of instruments and you're making big score projects. Sometimes uh, the formatting of Sibelius is redundant and superfluous. Say you just need to get rid of something on the staff, a rehearsal marker, a title, a composer, anything. You can simply select the thing you want to hide in the score and parts and do command shift H. And you can see that it's, uh, when you select it, it's like a light, lighter purple, not a dark purple, which means that it's hidden. And when you uh, deselect it, of course, you see that it's grayed out as opposed to a dark black text. To undo this, you do the same thing. You just select what you want to unhide and do shift command H. This is a tip that works with a lot of different things. It's kind of hard to pick an example, but uh, it'll be very useful for you when you need it. <laughs> tip number two, use playback to check for mistakes. In the transport window, you go to the beginning of your score and simply hit the space bar. This is a really useful tool to check dynamics, like if you missed a dynamic or if there's a missed note, you'll be able to hear everything and you'll be able to address it in real time using the transport function. You can also speed up if you want to kind of go fast through something, you know something sounds good, you've listened to it a couple times, you just want to go faster so that you can get through more of the piece quickly. You just bump up this tempo slider here in the transport window. So, you know, the main tempo is like 100 and so I just bumped it up to 175. And to get back, you just kind of click in the center of the tempo slider, it'll go back to normal. And my number one tip is double check everything. So when you're working with parts, whether you're working with a score, just make sure you go everything before you send your project to your musicians or your school program, anything. It's just, you never know what you're gonna miss. And a secret tip that I like to do is over here in the view panel in the ribbon. So in the invisibles area here, I like to deselect hidden objects when you deselect hidden objects, it takes out all of the unnecessary things. It gives you more of what, like a full PDF printout of what your piece is going to look like. And to bring them back to double check everything, of course, you know, you go back to hidden objects and just select that box again. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these 10 Sibelius tips for beginners help you get started on all your fun musical projects. If you want me to cover something else, or if you have another question or something totally random that you're encountering in your Sibelius documents, Leave me a comment below and I'll answer it if I can. Thank you so much again. And until we meet again, peace out. <laughs>